but it's only on Sundays. So it will say handicap, but underneath it will say Sundays, Sunday and it will Monday. say 8 to 11 p.m. or something like that. So it's only for that time. And I know that because when I go to DJ an event there, I always park there because that's right where the, the basement entrance is. And suppose you could just put two right next to the church there and limit it just for when the services are on Sunday. Uh, that would be my suggestion. I, I, just a thought, because I know we're already doing it at St. John's. I thought that was the request, well, actually. Well, yeah, it, it is the request. The concern from the traffic officer um, was on the back side of the church, there is a parking lot, and there's plenty of extra space in that parking lot for handicapped parking. And per their estimates, it's no closer to the front door from where they, are from, the from where they, where they could put that. Okay, so I'm that fine with that explanation. They, they, could, they could put handicapped parking there. However, the committee, I think, said, let's look at it a little bit more before we, before we go the with the suggestion. Yeah. Mr. Barrett? I, I was just going to add to that conversation. Is one of the things that we wanted to confirm is that if there was a ramp, the location of the ramp, and right. there is a new okay. ramp that was being constructed, which was what we thought was the case, but wanted to be sure that that was correct instead of... They're doing that in an elevator inside. An elevator as well? There's okay. Elevator, yes. I, I, and to go on record, I attend that church. So. Sure. But they do, they're putting in all handicap accessible elevator ramps. It, it's, it's an older congregation hmm. uh, that they are looking to try to assist. Okay. Thank you. That's good to know. Yeah. But that's a good idea. And I thought that was what they were thinking was going to be kind of there. There's nothing else then for Mr. Anders? Yep. Just one last one. Um, I know we're not meeting until later in June. When is the work by the high school starting? I, I should have asked that back in public works if I'm out of line. The culvert? Uh, no, the. Uh, I was going to talk about the culvert in my report. North Street. Um, North Street. So, North Street, is, we actually have a schedule. Uh, and what do you say? The end of June, I think right? End of June. I think it can't be the first week after school because there's some events going on at the school district that week. Uh, okay. But he's been so Mr. DeShavo has been in contact with the school as far as it, a a good time to do that project. Okay. Because if you if you recall, right after school they're still right. doing That's a lot of right. school type of activities. So, but yeah, he he discussed that with Mr. Labenberg at what would have been the Public Works Committee meeting um, okay. the other day. Thank you. Public safety will report progress. General administration, Mr. Barrett. Uh, yes, we have two items that require official action. Uh, General administration uh, committee met on May 13th. The first is we had an interview for um, with Lauren Kuhn. Uh, she was interested in becoming a member of the Arts Commission. Uh, has done a lot of really interesting art events regionally stuff in the area that uh, she felt she could probably bring to Emmaus as well uh, just overall very enthusiastic so I think she'll be a, a wonderful addition she's also volunteered her time for a number of other events here the rain barrel and, and snow blast if I remember correctly so I think she'll be a great addition so I'll place that in the form of a motion um, to appoint Lauren Kuhn to the Arts Commission with the term expiring 2118 is there a second Second by Mr. Labenberg. Discussion? All those in favor? Please six ayes. And the second is for our safety commission, excuse me, our safety committee. And uh, it was recommended that we reappoint Paul Shankweiler to the safety committee, so I'll place that in the form of a motion. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Brown. Discussion? All those in favor? Please six eyes. Uh, and that's all that requires official action. I'll report progress. Thank you. Budget and finance. In the absence of Mr. Holtzhafer, Mr. Shubster, would you like to give that report, please? Sure. Uh, first on the agenda is uh, Resolution 2015-15. Resolved by Borough Council to authorize payment of the May 4th, 2015 bill list as follows. Bill list, $203,992.84. Payroll number 10, $124,658.32. Payroll taxes, 
$43,391.78 for a total of $372,042.94 done this 18th of May 2015 and I'll place that in the form of a motion. Is there a second? A second by Mr. Anders. Discussion? All those in favor? Good success. And the next uh, item on our agenda is we had a discussion at our budget and finance meeting prior to the um, council meeting. Uh, the, um, the rates for electricity, uh, are, Shane, our, our um, contract is running out, correct? Correct, George. So um, what we discussed was uh, providing the uh, opportunity for Shane, or basically authorizing Shane to um, go out and bid for the electricity contracts. Uh, looking for the better rate and what our suggestions were that um, we voted on a 2-0 vote that uh, he go out and uh, solicit or, or request bids for uh, 24 months and uh, what I'll do is I'll place that in the form of a motion uh, that we authorize uh, Shane Pepe to um, get bids on our electrical uh, contract for the best rate at 24 months. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Ladenberg. Discussion, Mr. Leidenberg? Yes, um, I would personally like to give him more flexibility and give him the option to lock in for a year or three years, but give him that option because you don't know what he's going to come across in a search. He may check 10 companies and find out, you know what, this is, this is good to lock in for three years or vice versa. These are all expensive. I'm only going to lock in for a year. I prefer that, and I appreciate you coming to the council this time. Um, for this sole purpose of discussion. Um, but also, this also allows him to lock in right at that moment, correct? Right. Yes. He doesn't have to right. Because that's usually that. those rates are for one day and that's, that's it, correct. or two yeah. days at the most. So the motion really needs to allow me to, to sign a contract. And allow, all right, I'll amend my motion to allow you to sign a contract on the, uh, uh, so, uh, upon receiving the But rates. I would like to allow him to have that, that flexibility. I, I don't know what the rest of the council feels. We did feels. talk about that at committee about we don't want to do six months because then we're negotiating in December, yep. uh, which is the worst time to negotiate an electric rate. But um, 18 months, a year, what? Or I, I two just years. I just want to say I do follow electric rates, and some of them sometimes when the market goes a little wacky, sometimes they won't go out past a year. So you yeah. may mm -hmm. preclude yourself from getting rates from other companies because they may not give you a two-year quote. Right. So right. that's why I'm saying let's give them some flexibility. Um, if things are good, then you can lock in two years. But if there's companies that are only giving you one year and you can only get X amount for two years, I don't know. I mean, that's going to be on Shane to figure it out. What's the best deal for the borough? Mr. Schubert, okay, do you so, want to amend your motion? Yeah, I'll amend it to uh, allow him to lock in uh, rates be uh, based on a 12 to 24 month period. Mr. Langberg, you're all right with that, sec? To I'll amend my motion. second. Yes. <coughs> 12 to 24. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Barrett? Well, yeah, that still didn't get to the three years, though. I, I don't think you'll find that, but if it's there, I would, I would like to see that also. You want to go available. all the way out to 36? Or? I mean, it's giving range. Okay. We obviously trust I, the right. Yeah, we do. Use his best judgment on all I mean, if things, he locks so. in a phenomenal rate for three years, then, I mean. Yeah, it would be great. Right. I don't, I don't know if he's. I don't think it's out there because of the, the market's so. Right. I haven't seen anything in 36 months. Because yeah, the market like, is so unpredictable. A couple years why. ago, they had it out at 36. But I the competition is a little bit different. Our current, our current supplier, um, they requoted at over $0.08. Cents, so that's, that's a, a significant increase. Eight of, cents increase. Well, up no, to we eight cents. Six point nine. Right now, we're paying like six point nine. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's a significant increase, <laughs> and that's PPL Energy Plus. So usually, they're they stay pretty low. Um, so we, we definitely need to go out. The reason is because of regulations and and yeah. not all the um, upgrades they have to do, and that's in, it's being passed on. Yeah. Yeah, I did so see. I mean, just in residential and, and normally the commercial, we can get less in residential, but there's a couple um, residential out there right now at around seven six so i'm thinking i, I like i said in, in my quick email to you over the weekend um or, or last week i think it was to budget finance i definitely think your electricity rate's going to go up i don't think we're going to see 6.9 cents again but we're going to try to keep it as, as low as we can obviously get it okay and when does that expire july 
July. Okay. Yep. Mr. Shosta, did you want to amend your motion to 36 months? Sure. I'll amend it one more time. <laughs> uh, we'll amend that motion to uh, 12, uh, to, a 12 to 36 months. Good Lord, Paula. Uh, Poor Paula. Mr. Leidenberg, are you all right amending your second? I'll amend my second, but I also have another thing to add. <laughs> I, I just know through experience and, and the, right, the law that you can um, switch up to two months prior to your expiration. Right. Okay. Uh, there, there are some... There are some, right, so that's why we need to. Right, so I'm just saying we, you can yeah, do it earlier. You can lock it in up yeah. to two months before. We need to notify You did that out. earlier with something else. There are also, um, just so you know, a lot of the contracts are allowing you to get, get early releases without paying a penalty. Oh, good. So we'll, right. we'll also look for that in, in a contract proposal. Great. Okay. Any further discussion, comments, questions? Changes. All those in favor? We got six ayes. And I don't think I have anything else for this evening. I'll report progress. Mr. Barrett. Oh. Just one question. I saw on, yep. on the uh, memorandum, what was the renew LV request? On the Sorry, what was that? Uh, there was a request here that was denied um, from renew LV, a funding request. Uh, for the is it in your memor memorand memorandum? Yeah. Where is that? It was oh, yeah, just it a letter that I had received that I had oh. forwarded to the chair. Um, it's in reference to the food bank. I think, uh, yeah, I think they want money for the food bank. Looking for financial donation. Oh, okay. I just wasn't sure I, what that was for. Yeah. Hearing nothing further, budget and finance will report progress. Yep. Community Relations Planning and Development, Mr. Brown. All right, thank you, Madam President. Um, nothing for official action, but I would like to, to share. Uh, we had a share with everyone that we had a very uh, good meeting um, with uh, Mike Gibson in attendance from the Planning Commission uh, and also uh, from the Mays Main Street Partners Economic Development Committee uh, chairperson, uh, Mrs. McManum, who's in uh, attendance with us tonight. Um, Mrs. McManum actually uh, spearheaded this and was able to uh, get with uh, Mr. Gibson. Uh, the reason is is that uh, since CRD is uh, doing a revisioning uh, for, throughout this whole year, um, where do we want to go as a borough? What is a borough? You know, what is the borough of Emmaus going to look like in 10, 15, 20 years? Uh, how do we help businesses? How do we grow the economic development here in the borough? And um, and, and we need to find those stakeholders. And and two of the stakeholders. Uh, is the Planning Commission with Mr. Gibson and uh, Mrs. McManum of the uh, Economic Development Committee, um, you know, through this conversation that we had, which was very candid, which was um, just open and honest. Uh, what are we doing as a committee, as CRD, and and how can how can the Economic Development Team help, and how can the Planning Commission help? And um, you know, uh, when we have situations like uh, Funk Brewery. Coming in, um, those are those economic development times. Uh, these aren't these big, you know, splashes in the pond, but uh, these are these are ways to help uh, local businesses come into the borough and be successful, like Funk is right now. And um, so, uh, you know, this 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 meeting um, is putting us on the right track with the right partners, the right stakeholders, and we can we're going to continue to. Uh, bring in the uh, Southwestern Lehigh Comprehensive Plan that's going to be redone soon, uh, shortly. Um, so all these have a key element uh, through our planning and revisioning. And so um, it was about, uh, I would say about an hour and 15 minute committee meeting. You know, just, it was just really good. Um, but besides that, uh, nothing, again, nothing for official action. So uh, I'm going to report progress. Thank you. Personal Appeals Part 2. Anyone with a personal appeal, please step forward, sign in, state your name and address for the record, and you have five minutes. Hearing none, Borough Manager's Report. Mr. Pappy. Three items. First of all, the significant revenue and expense items for the first half of May are in your binder, if you have any questions regarding that. Um, secondly, next Tuesday, I have a meeting with our engineer, um, our public works director, PennDOT, a bunch of consultants from the grant. Um, we're finally starting the process with this transmodal uh, or the multimodal transportation grant. We wanted to have this project done this year. When we were awarded the grant last year, what they did was they awarded grants for 2015 as well as 2014. 
So DC, if you got the money through DCD, you could have started your project already. But if you got it through PennDOT, you have to wait to do anything until July 1st. So what does that mean? Well, the way that we did all of our math and we did all of our calculations and we prepared the grant was match money was going to be spent on engineering, was going to be spent on our guys doing work, was going to be spent on a lot of things. So we've held off the final engineering for the project because that's match money. Because the grant stipulations are anything you do prior to July 1st is disqualified. So if we were to spend $10,000 on engineer work, you can't use that towards, towards the match. Um, so what that does is it pushes the project back a little bit. And because we have to get DEP approval to cross the stream, that means it pushes the permitting process back a little bit. Do I think we're going to get it done by the end of the year? Probably not, just because when you start talking about paving and you talk about utilities and opening up the stream, November's kind of the end, the beginning of November. That's where you're done. Um, if we can't start until July and it takes a couple months for DEP approvals, the construction part of the project can't happen probably until early spring. Uh, my plan would be start early spring. As soon as the quarry opens up in April, let's get that project out. Let's get it done. You know, we can start, we can do the bidding on the project in January when nobody has any work going on anyway, uh, which means the project should come in cheaper. Uh, do the project in the spring. You know, our goal was to do it in the summer so that way it doesn't affect school buses, it doesn't affect transportation. We need to move this project as quickly as we can at this point. Um, so our first meeting with the consultants is next week. Um, I expect them to have an entire army of people here. So if any of you want to go see what the bottom of that cover looks like, you're more than willing or more than uh, more than welcome to join me. Um, <laughs> what next, day is that? Next Tuesday. The 26th? Yeah, I think it is at, I mean, I, you've seen, obviously, the front of your budget yeah, binders showed the the picture. Um, 10 a.m. Is, is when that meeting is next Tuesday. The last thing is I sent you an email this afternoon, May 28th. Uh, you've directed me to go to the Zoning Hearing Board regarding the daycare that's being transformed into yes. apartments. Yep. I need a pinch hitter somewhere. I can't be in both places. Um, but there's also a forum on this child abuse clearance thing uh, at 7 o'clock that night. We need somebody to be at that because we really need some answers as to, right now we're in it for probably $10,000 as far as getting everybody cleared that we think we need to get cleared. I've been trying to contact the Department of Human Services literally for two months. They've now like reduced the, you can call our offices on Mondays and Wednesdays from 9 to 11, but we'll only answer from 9.15 to 9.30. Um, <laughs> I mean, that's, so they don't answer the emails, they don't answer anything. We, we don't have answers on whether or not police department employees need to get the clearance. We've heard from an attorney from Delaware County that says he spoke to a representative at the department that says police do, but yet nobody at MOPEC can confirm that. So we really, like, that's 20 employees at $48 an employee. So, I mean, that, like, that adds up. We know lifeguards, we know parks employees, we know some of that other stuff. Does every single public works employee need? If you have an employee that's under 18, they do. Because there's a chance that one of our public works employees could supervise that employee. So that means 18 public works guys are going to have to get it. Um, does our arts commission need it? Because those volunteers twice a year have direct contact with kids. You talk to the solicitor, he's like, ah, I don't think they do. The act is fuzzy at best, um, but there's no clear, we're, we're talking between 200 and 220 people at this point that we think need to get the clearance. You're talking 10 grand. Um, that's tough to, that's tough to swallow. Uh, yeah, and I just want to state that's not just a once and done. This is once every, every three, three years. years. Right. So we're looking, and since it's not staggered, we're looking at, you know, ten, twelve thousand dollars every three years. Well, every three years, and and that's right, and that's a, that's a major impact because we have to do it all at once. That means every three years we're going to have to do it. I, I all think our we, all of our volunteer crossing guards are going to have to do it. Now, the caveat they did slip in there 
It was if you're a volunteer and you've lived in the state of Pennsylvania for 10 years or more, you don't have to do the fingerprint test or, or check. You can just sign an affidavit that said that says, but you still have to do the state police and the, the child watch, child. which is 20. So you only have to pay $20 for the volunteer rather than and this 4750 or whatever the number is. This is a direct result of uh, the Jerry Sandusky. Correct. This, this cost to all the taxpayers is directly related to him. But back which, to my original by the way, if he was fingerprinted and background checked, it, it wouldn't have happened. Well, no, it wouldn't that, have prevented it anyhow. Right. It wouldn't have prevented um, it. Mr. I, Anders? I would, I think Shane needs to be there to get a clear definition of what we need to have. So is there anyone that can attend this other meeting for the zoning? Yeah, I need somebody to pinch it somewhere so I can go. I, I don't care which one I go to, but I need to go to one and not the other. I can't go to both. So if somebody can go well, to the zoning hearing board. The for zoning me. hearing board, what is our stance on that? Well, you're, you're, so you're, the direction you gave me two months ago because it's they canceled the, the two meeting. Two units. Was, well, I, I think you, you directed me to go just based on the parking. Parking. Parking issue. Right. I think that as far as the two versus four units, I think. I whatever think they, whatever parking provides for X amount of units, that's what we supported, correct? I think so. I think that's how we were, we were I handling it. That's the, I mean, I could probably go. I'm on vacation that week, but I'm not going anywhere. Okay. Not that I want to go to another meeting. <laughs> but well, he, fire, could write, he could write you up, though, the letter to take with you. Yeah, you I say. can put together what, what... Fire me another email. I'll pull the, I'll pull the notes together from, from the last time and... Just uh, fire me an email. What okay. time is that? Six. That's going to be six o'clock in this room. Okay. All right, so you'll, you'll, be, at, you'll be at that one. That's zoning? Yeah. Zoning, yeah. Yeah, I happen to see that there's like six items on that night. Yeah. <laughs> I'll make sure that they go. You yeah, go, you go first. Close to last. I, close to first. No, I'm gonna sit there for three hours. <laughs> all right, thank you, Mr. Greenberg. I appreciate that. Um, then I'll go to the DHS form. All right, and if you have anything for me, please ask. Otherwise, progress. I have nothing. Anybody have anything for the manager? Hearing none, President's business. I have uh, nothing this evening. Is there a motion to adjourn? <laughs> motion by Mr. Leifenberg. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Anders. Discussion? All those in favor, we got six ayes. We are adjourned at 827.